Let's just bow our heads and ask the Lord to join us tonight and, and help us with this important topic. Father God, I just, um, I ask first of all for, for Dennis, um, kind of big shoes to, to fill in for. I ask, Lord, that you would just uh, come upon me and, and help uh, the words that I give to be of service in, in these precious lives, God. And I just thank you for this, this time that we can have together to look at such an important topic, God, of, of how it is that we can return to others something of what it is that you've given to us, God, that as you begin to heal us, that's not just a one-way street. It's something where we need to take that healing and extend it to others in need. And somehow in that process, God, you bring healing, uh, an extra measure of healing to our own lives. And I just thank you for that. Amen. So tonight's topic is, is yes, and it's kind of, um, there's just a, a verse that, that comes to mind that, that my wife Francie loves, and, and I'm not sure exactly where it's found, but it's this, it's this verse that talks about God restoring the, the years that the locusts have eaten. And one of the things that I, I see in recovery is many times um, once people actually get it and they begin to understand kind of the the way that life works when you're doing it God's way instead of doing it your own. Um, there's kind of this regret of all the wasted years, the lost years that, that just went for nothing and kind of this idea of I, I get it now and I know that my life has value but I'm, I'm, I'm 50 years old. If only I'd known this when I was 20. If only I'd known this when I, when I was 30. And the thing that's kind of neat about, about that verse of God giving back what the locusts ate is it's kind of this, this promise that all of those things that seem to just come and destroy your life and blow it apart for no reason, God's going to take those things and he's going to use the, the, the story that has come out of those experiences that you might never have wished for, but at the same time, in a funny way, when you give all of that over to God, it becomes a gift because you have a very special story that is all yours to tell. It's a story that, that only you can share with others. And so even though sometimes we might look back and say, you know, if only I could do it again, I'd never do it that same way. If we look forward and say, God, how is it that, that you will fulfill that promise in my life of redeeming these years that were lost, that somehow God comes into that picture in, in, a, in a special way. And as we walk with him, he lets us look back and and see how those years that we think were lost can actually be put to use and to value. And so as we're talking about this idea of, of saying yes, I kind of look at that in, in two parts. The, the first part of saying yes is for us to actually yield to God and to allow him to have his way in our life instead of kind of doing things our own way. And so when we say, God, you know, I'm done, I'm putting the shovel down, I'm gonna look up, I'm gonna stop trying to do this my own way and start doing this your way, all of a sudden, God has a chance to enter into our life and begin to change who and what we are. But sometimes as we go through that, the, the, the process of recovery and we begin to make um, new friendships, healthy friendships, we get involved in programs, church, as we, as we come to this place of healing, all of a sudden it's very easy for kind of the old world and old life to begin to fade. You know, at first there's kind of the pullback and, and the friendships. But as it is that we walk through healthy steps and we begin to move out of that and our lives begin to come back to sanity and balance, sometimes it's really easy to think, you know, tonight I just, um, I'm just not feeling a need to go there. You know, I'm, I'm in a good place, I'm in a healthy place, and I think I'm just going to stay home. And so this idea of yes is once we've said yes to God and we've allowed him to come in and begin the healing in us, we need to not just take that gift that he's given us and and hold on to that, but we begin, we need to begin to look at how it is that we can take and turn that around and begin to give back to others. And so saying yes is kind of this two-way street where we say yes to God and receive his healing and forgiveness, but then we don't forget this incredible gift that he's given us in our lives, and we begin to look for how is it that we can take that gift and begin to give back to others. And at this point, I, I really, I want to, I want to caution you, there was a, a message that, that Pastor Dennis gave a number of years ago, and it, and it just really stuck with me. And what he said in a nutshell is that if, if, we're trying, if we're trying to help others and we're saying yes to helping others because we're still broken inside, because we're still hurt, then as we help others, we feel better about ourselves 
but the love that we're giving isn't a pure love. There's a little bit of selfishness there because what we're giving, we're actually receiving something in return and we're feeling better about ourselves in that process. And so before we begin to actually say yes, we need to look at our hearts carefully and say, God, have you completed the healing process in me to a point where what I'm giving back to others is coming from a place of wholeness or am I trying to help to fill my time and to fill a spot in me with love and appreciation from others, but that is, is still filling a spot in my life that you actually want to fill. And so sometimes looking at that very carefully and, and saying, you know, is, am, am I at a place of healing where the love that I'm giving is pure and unselfish, or am I giving to others because I'm still in a place of brokenness and I simply want to feel better and have their appreciation coming and making me feel better about myself. Once you've asked that difficult question, you've come to a place where you're operating not from a place of perfection or complete wholeness, but from a place where you kind of have your sanity back, you can turn off the stereo, turn off the TV, be at peace with yourself and with the Lord. Then at that point, look at how it is. Look for those opportunities where you can show up and you can begin to make a difference and to give back to other people. So the nights where you don't necessarily feel like coming into group for yourself, but turning that around and saying, you know, God, I'm going to show up. I'm going to go to group and I'm going to look for that person. Maybe that's where I was that's hurting and that hasn't said yes to God and doesn't understand what this is all about. And I'm going to find, I'm, I'm going to just ask you to show me that person tonight so that I can, so that I can bless them. And I think in that process, you'll just be amazed at the opportunities that open up for you to give back some of what it is that you've received. Another way to do that is, is just, you know, in, in, in service, maybe, the, maybe the, the church has blessed you and you've sat there in the pew and you've been fed by the pastor, but there's kids in the nursery that are screaming their heads off and there's a shortage of, of nursery workers. And so maybe you have an opportunity to go and, and to just volunteer, you know, Leah, you volunteer, what, a week? week a month or something and have a chance to make a difference in these little guys lives and you know for some kids that may be the the only the only Jesus that they ever hear about that may be the only message of hope in their little lives that are troubled maybe at home um, that may be the only opportunity that they have to to know something of God's love for them and so in a way you've again taken that gift that you've received and you've given that back to others and so I, I just I just for those of you that are in a place tonight where you're not ready to give back and you came here to, to find something of, of hope for yourself, I just want you to know that contained in, in all these steps and most importantly throughout God's word is this incredible message of hope that starts with saying yes to him. Past that message of saying yes to him and allowing to him to change your life is coming to a place where your life begins to be restored, sanity begins to return. And my challenge to you is, in that process, look for the joy of reaching out and, and, and giving to others in whatever way it is that God's gifted you or wired you. Maybe going to somebody's house that can't get out or can't paint, is older, and just fixing it up for them. Maybe in a child's life. Maybe in somebody else that's in the depths of the addiction that you were in, so long as that's a healthy place for you to go and doesn't pull you back down. But look for those places where you can begin to give back and honor God in that process by saying, you know, I've received much and I want to give back much. There's, you know, the, the, the parable in the Bible about the people that received different, different amounts from, from their master and they were kind of held accountable for what it is that they did with that. And I think in some way to those of us that have been deeply broken and others have come alongside and helped us in that healing process, there's a whole bunch for us to give back. So tonight I just encourage you, wherever you are in that process, you know, if you don't know the Lord and the power that he can have in your life and in your recovery, seek to know that and consider the possibility of saying yes to him and letting him take you in a new direction. If you have said yes and you know what that looks like, don't forget where you came from. Make an effort to give back to others. Thank you.